Hello, I'm Lance Lucero, Product Manager of Astronomy for Celestron, and welcome to another installment of Dear Celestron, where we answer your questions. The question we're looking at today is, how much can my telescope magnify? I get this question a lot at public star parties, and I give my patented answer of, well, it depends. To understand why, let's take a look at the basics of how a telescope magnifies an image. Light from a distant celestial target carries information to your eye. Unfortunately, the fully dark adapted human eye can only open to about six and a half millimeters of aperture. So that's a lot of light that's wasted and only a small amount reaching the sensors in the back of your eye. That's where a telescope comes in. A telescope uses an objective lens or a primary mirror to collect a large amount of light and focuses it down to a point that will fit inside of that six and a half millimeter pupil of your eye. The larger the aperture of the scope, the more light it can collect and funnel into your pupil, allowing you to see details that you would have completely missed looking at an object with just the naked eye. Think of it like a bucket catching rain. The larger the diameter of the bucket, the more rain you're gonna collect inside that bucket for a given amount of time. Light works in a similar fashion. That is why people with large Dobsonian telescopes have a tendency to call them light buckets. The distance between the objective lens or the primary mirror to the point where the light focuses, in other words, the point where the eyepiece is placed, is called the telescope's focal length. Eyepieces also have a focal length. If you take the focal length of the telescope and divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece, the resulting ratio is the number of times that that image will be magnified using that eyepiece and telescope combination. If I replace the eyepiece with one of a shorter focal length, the magnification gets higher. If I replace the eyepiece with one of a longer focal length, the magnification drops lower. For example, if I had a telescope with a 1000 millimeter focal length and I used a 10 millimeter eyepiece, I would get 100 times magnification. If I used a 25 millimeter eyepiece in the same telescope, I would get 40 times. If I used a 5 millimeter, I would get 200 times. Magnification can be a wonderful thing. When you're looking at the surface of the moon along the day-night terminator or looking at a nice bright planet, Magnification is exactly what you want, but most people don't realize that when you're looking at a faint nebula or galaxy, low power will actually give you an advantage. The eyepiece magnifies the image that is being focused by the objective lens or the primary mirror into an image that you can see. The higher the magnification of the eyepiece, the more spread out that light becomes. The lower the magnification of the eyepiece, the more concentrated the light will be as it will be illuminating a smaller area. To use another water analogy, think of a garden hose with an adjustable spray nozzle. If you use the adjustable nozzle so that it puts out a hard jet over a small area, you are going to soak whatever you aim that hose at and you're going to do it pretty quickly. Adjust the nozzle so that the spray covers a much wider area and the same amount of water coming out of the nozzle diffuses over a larger area. It takes you much longer to actually reach the same saturation of your target. Now light in a telescope behaves in a similar fashion to the water going through the hose. Focusing the light over a smaller area, meaning lower magnification, makes for a bright and contrasty image. Using higher magnifications, spreading that same amount of light over a larger area lowers the overall brightness of the image and lowers the contrast as well. So when going after a bright object like the moon or a planet, high power works fine. The objectives are bright enough to handle high magnification. But when you're going after faint targets, such as a nebula or galaxy, you definitely want lower to mid magnifications because you want to concentrate that light over a smaller area, making it more contrasty and easier to see. Magnification does have its useful limits, however. This is solely dependent on how much light you're actually collecting, or the aperture, or the diameter of the scope's objective or primary mirror. The rule of thumb is that under calm, stable seeing conditions, 
you can use about 60 power per inch of aperture, or 2.3 power per millimeter of aperture. In the case of a Nexstar 8SE, it has an 8 inch aperture, so that limits you out to around 480 power magnification. Can you go higher than this? Yes. You can go higher than 480 power by using combinations of Barlow lenses and shorter focal length eyepieces. The image will appear larger, but it will also be much fainter and will not provide you any more detail than you had in the eyepiece at 480 power. It basically starts to wash out the image and decreases your contrast rapidly. If you were observing the planets or the moon in less than ideal conditions, which unfortunately for me in Southern California is most of the time, atmospheric turbulence is going to limit how much magnification you can get away with using on a given night. Atmospheric conditions are generally at their worst right after sunset. The ground has been absorbing heat all day long and is now radiating that heat back into the cooler evening air. These thermal currents that it causes can distort the light path, making the image appear to wobble. Think of a swimming pool. When the water is calm, you could look at the bottom of the pool and see the drain. But if the surface is rippled in any way, the drain becomes very difficult to see clearly and is distorted as the water diffracts the light. On nights like this, I grab my eyepieces. I'll slowly work my way up from low power to high power, starting off with, say, a 25 millimeter eyepiece, then going to a 15, a 10, a 7, and a 5 millimeter. Once I start to see the atmospheric turbulence is costing me image detail, I go back to the last eyepiece that I used, and that is the maximum magnification I will use at that time. As the night goes on, atmospheric conditions will tend to stabilize. I find the best times for high power planetary viewing to be in the early morning hours before dawn. So make sure you repeat this process throughout the night to ensure that you're using the best magnification that you can as the conditions change. Other things to consider when using higher magnification is to make sure that your mirrors are well collimated in the case of a Newtonian or a schmidt cassegrain telescope. If your mirrors are not properly aligned, you're not focusing all of your collected light into a single image. Higher magnification you use, the more obvious this misalignment will appear. Make sure to let your tube cool down to ambient air temperature before doing any high power planetary observations. If the scope is significantly warmer than the surrounding air, the heat radiating off the tube can mimic the atmospheric distortions that we talked about in the form of tube currents. Stick with lower magnifications until the tube has sufficiently cooled. I hope this answered your question. Please stay tuned for more Dear Celestron videos. Thank you for watching and clear skies.